Oh, finally. Fuck, this is the most... This guy, I'll tell you what, guys and girls, this guy here... I don't know why Tat's crew inherited him because I thought I thought I was bad enough. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Walker, mate, you are infamous in your own right. Jeez. <laughs> trying to track you down is like trying to try to find out, you know, trying to track COVID down. I don't know. It's like trying to pin the tail on the donkey. How have you been? All right. All good. The most infamous man in, in this business. You are definitely one of those. You just like you still don't like getting caught. He hates getting caught. <laughs> Mate, what's oh, going on with your beard, Nick? Oh, I love it. Oh, look at this snack. What's going on? What's you know, going on? I messed up minds. It's the British. I was going to start this interview with a full English just to really wind you up. Greasy face, everything brilliant. Yeah, yeah, with the old, you know, tin tomatoes. Yeah. Even I was going to push my luck with tin tomatoes, but um. Nick, I've known you a long time. I mean, for, for all of you guys that don't know Aurum, you know, I work with Aurum TV gallery, trying to spread the news and give you a little bit of an insight to some of these, the minds of the workings of these artists, which is very difficult when you're dealing with someone like Nick Walker. Getting inside this mind, believe me, trust me, I thought I was complex. Um, Nick, you've been in this game a very, very long time in his early beginnings, especially with the new culture of, of, of what they call, you know, street art and contemporary. What is your what is your whole vibe with? Because obviously we would we we met obviously via, you know, obviously Tats crew, and the whole idea, which is you know Tats, their reach is huge worldwide. You know, the idea of how and Nozem, you know, obviously, you know, they kind of took up the mantle after me, and then you guys you came along. What was the, how did that relationship happen? I think at first. It was, it was crazy because we're doing, um, there was a thing called See No Evil, um, a big mural show in, in Bristol in 2011, I think it was. And um, I've been, I had this like, big, big building to do in, in Bristol. It's on Nelson Street. So, you know, each artist has allocated a building. So I went and chose the biggest one. And, um, and then I realised, oh, shit, I've only got a certain amount of time to do this. So it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> and it and it's kind of like the clock's ticking away, and um, I'm like half done pretty much. And then uh, what happened was like bio. So bio comes rocks up. Yeah, he rocks up. He goes, I think you need a hand. So he jumped on. He jumped on the cherry picker, and uh, we 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 just pretty much worked like a couple of um inkjet printers throughout throughout the night till about sort of six thirty in the morning, and then uh. Job done, you know. The festival opened the Saturday morning, um, and yeah, it, it just—I was just like, yeah, indebted. Like it was just a, such a kind of like, um, you know, it was a hard work. You know what I mean? It was really, really hard work. And you know, it was just like, yeah, right, let's do it. So, um, and then when I moved, when I moved, kind of uh, over to New York, um, Crash pretty much took me under, and you know under his wing and said, you know, my studio is your studio. So he completely, you know, opened doors for me that way. And, um, yeah, just, you know, and then you kind of, you know, it's like, you just, you get involved in projects, the friendship and the kind of, you know, the circle grows and yeah, it's been, um, yeah, it's been good, man. Isn't I mean, it crazy? The, le the level of what Tats crew are at. One of the, one of the main points for me in, in terms of putting the work in the gallery especially with Crash and Bio, was that no one had, no one this side in Asia is really familiar, unless you're a private collector and you know Crash's stuff. You know, Crash, we're talking 40 years deep of contemporary, man. You know, yeah. one of the only guys, apart from Lee and Ramble Z, you know, those guys that really had already a, you know, a, a stake in in, in the in a, in a kind of contemporary world. But, you know, when you talk about down to earth, if you compare that to an English artist that had, had achieved that much, Without pulling the New York card, there's something about those guys that is right in it's it's in the in the, the humbleness, the humanity of them. I don't think it's even comparable. Nah, that's what that's what you get. Um, that's what you sense immediately. You know when you know those are these are the these are the guys that kind of you know inspired myself, yourself. Um, 
many, 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 many others. And and it's just like, yeah, they're just they're just they're just humble human beings. Mm. You know? what's, the, what's the move for you? Because for me, going to New York the first time, obviously, it's always mind blowing, and you think, shit, you you feel like you want to be part of this thing that's bigger than us. You're on the shoulder of giants. For you, it was a real life move because you just had enough. Was there a point? Because for me, the UK it felt like it was just it was just too much. Did it feel like for you as an artist, you know, you just wanted to get out? Was it for you that you kind of got fed up with the graph side of it, or were you or you already going in with this vandal thing, which we'll get to? Um, yeah. But what was it for you? Was it just you just wanted to get out, want a complete change? Was you burnt out? Were you burning up? Were you, you know, what what was what was your thinking between be buying New York? I think I think New York City was always a place that I wanted to kind of spend time. I wanted to get to know the city. I wanted to, you know, like live and you know breathe it. And, you know. and it's the best playground for graffiti, you know. And then it's obviously it's the birthplace, you know. It's the mecca of graffiti. Mm. And even even though that you know the street art thing came a lot later. Um, I want, you know, the, it, it was, I just had this plan in my head. I was just like, right, I don't want to really want to, you know, who's going to see my work, right? Like, like here, you know, you can do so much in your own city, but then, you know, it's time for you to kind of like just, you know, jump away and experiment elsewhere. So like New York was like, okay, we're going to go over it and we're going to do, I think we're going to do 10, 10 pieces, 10, 11 pieces in eight days. So that was just like, you know, that was the mission. <laughs> it's just like a, like you know, whatever kind of weather we're gonna do it, you know. So yeah, that was that was it, and then it, that that kind of like lit a few fires, and then you know, and it just kept burning. So it was, and then I'm still I'm still walking around looking at walls, and I'm going, oh, I'm gonna do that, you know. So, so it's that, talking with you with um, you know, with this vandal, you know, really because to, to those of you that don't know, Nick's. You've always had this style where you've got this character, which I always found really fascinating with the pinstripe suit and the hat. I mean, you we, we had a conversation, a private conversation, which I won't repeat to anyone in Bristol. But in, 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 from an overview point of view, you know, obviously you've been doing this stencil game before anyone I know in that respect. Um, but the idea of the character, just explain to me, so I can, because I want to try and show the segue for people to understand this character, what, what what is the premise behind it, and how did it come about? All right, um, I'm walking down Neil Street, and uh, and then this is big. We'll get to the end, um, right by where it gets into Monmouth Road, and I, I mean, the UK we're talking, UK, yeah, Neil Street, my Neil's yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going down Neil Street. I'm I'm head. I'm like nearing to like Monmouth Street. And then there's, this, uh, um, there's this big golfing umbrella uh, on the ground. I'm like, you know, that's, these things are massive, aren't they? So it's like, yeah. I, look, I, look, I walk around him, this, you know, this spectacle, and uh, and I look underneath, and there's a little kitty in there, like smoking a crack pipe. I'm like, oh, the audacity, the temerity of the lad. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I was, I carried on walking, but just thinking, do you, do you know what I mean? That, that's smart. Because, you know, with a golfing umbrella, you can get away with it. Back or the umbrella. <laughs> just the umbrella. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good lad, clever chap. <laughs> and uh, wow. it, it just got me thinking. I'm thinking, well, what else can you do with a, with a golfing umbrella? And then, um, I was like, right, okay. And that's how I kind of, it kind of that led to the first um, vandal sequence, which was called the vandal triptych, where he's walking along. He's got an umbrella in his hand. In the middle, in the middle section sequence, um, he's got his back to the audience, let's say. So he's facing the wall, but he's got his back to the audience. So is, what's he doing? Is he lighting a cigarette? Is he, is he, is he yeah. on the phone? Is he taking a piss? Um, and then on the third, Sequence the reveal, the, last, the reveal. Yeah, he's, it reveals what he was doing in the middle, in the middle, yeah. um, middle sequence, and then it's just like right. So, and then a gallerist. I was talking to um, 
oh, who's it? Uh, it was, I think it was a Rob Cantor gallerist in um, in uh, California. This is a this is a long, a long while back, and he goes, "Oh, where's he go?" I'm like, "Oh, that's a good question." Yeah, so it just <laughs> made me think. So I just thought, oh, "Okay, well, he goes. What does he do?" And that's kind of how the the morning after series came along. So mm. what what he did, he went from city to city to city, um, to monument painting his palette of paint, dripping paint down buildings, mm. being, you know, just kind of like you know messing around. And you know, like doing doing like little cheeky kind of like maverick maneuvers. I, I always saw it when I first saw it. When I first saw the whole Vandal series and the idea when it, we kind of started to evolve, I know it's really weird. But I, do you remember Mr. Ben? I used to love the way that Mr. Ben used to go through this whole, you know, this whole secret. He's very well drawn. But you know, the idea of it would be this kind of this this character that was uh, this businessman that was by day, you know, a businessman, and by night. A va- vandal, and of course, he represents what the banking system was as well. With those guys, you know, very yeah. che- cheeky, you know, very cheeky chappies. You know, it's uh, it is the kind of thing you would invest your money with. You know, high risk. You know what I mean? It's that, and it's very like that. But I mean, you've you've always been on that edge of that. But I mean, as as far as because you set up the print shop after that, right? You had a big print shop set up in the in the UK. Yeah, well, well, admit the way, yeah. After that, but before that, it's like. The way he dressed as a vandal, that was kind of like the next kind of um that was the next step. How could you dress? You know, so you got your you got your you know your um he's like the quintessential kind of like gentleman dressed up, pinstripe, bowler hat, you know, all the rest of it. So with a bulk dressed like that, no one expects you to kind of like, you know, be up to kind of vandalism. Been doing nothing like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So basically, and then all that crowd. All that, you know, the banker crowd of London, they they all look the same, didn't they? So just allow him to kind of like slip into kind of, yeah, um, yeah just kind of, just, you know, like it morphed back into like, you know, crowds. And like, no I guess it's a bit like the football fans where they all started wearing getting the dressing smart. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's yeah, yeah. Like uh, job, yeah. You know, the, the, the old football hoodie. Yeah, yeah. Like Lacoste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you've, been, you've been at the forefront of doing... Uh, and, and obviously the demand, I mean, I'm, getting your work was a tough one for me because we know each, even though we know each other, it was tough getting your work for the gallery because you obviously you were moving studio at the time again, you were moving around. There's been a lot of shifting in the world of Nick Walker in the last couple of years. What has been your plan um, in, in right now, especially with the pandemic happening? Well, what has been on your on your agenda? Because obviously you were here. You know, with Bio, we, when we got we saw Bio, Bio, Bio getting married, which was lovely. And then you went back, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that was going on with you moving around. And when we met in Bristol with the documentary, you were about to get that building. Do you still have that place in Bristol? What happened? There was that place in Bristol where you're going to have a workshop right near the skate park. Yeah. Um, no, I still got it. Still got it. I bought, I bought that in auction. Um, it's the old car wash. Right, it just, it, it, it's amazing. So it looks like nothing from the front, and then you know you go in, and it's a, like a long kind of it's a big um, space, long, a lovely long space. Stretch. It turns into an you know double floor and the rest of it. But we're just putting we're putting planning permission to uh, the council. Um, architects have done um, all the work for it, so we're in that stage now. So we're dealing with like you know. So you thinking about going back to the UK and having a stint of, of 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 obviously you know you've been going back and forth for a while now, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, I've obviously got uh, roots in Bristol, but you know, um, my long plan is to kind of you know smell um, hear the sea when I go to sleep and see it when I wake up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, that's kind of what I've wanted to always do, so to kind of like, you know, live next to the coast, or, you know, whatever, stretch of sea, still deciding. But um, for the moment, you know, obviously building plans, I've got to go into the uh, the space in Bristol. I use it as a studio, you know, on and off, as and when. Um, but really, you know, it's been a kind of, it's been a big transition the last kind of year, especially, you know, obviously we've had like the whole COVID um nonsense going on you know and it's it, 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 i've kind of I've, i'm under got a manager 
Um, well, you find you got yourself a manager. He must be having a great old time. <laughs> well, yeah. well, yeah, nightmare. But <laughs> that's me, not him. But um, but it's kind of it, it's made me. You know, I've been you know uh, organizing everything. So a lot of my time was kind of like running in and out and kind of like organized organizing shipments here. So that 80, 20 percent divide of um, studio and then prints and sending stuff off was kind of like really, really dysfunctional. So it's kind of, you know, now it's all flipped. Now it's like 80 percent in the studio. You know, and um, everything oh, else is now we're going to get the original piece of Nick Walker finally. So we say, uh, you know, finally, finally paint more seriously. I yeah. mean, it's been a breath of fresh air, just you know, you know, not having to kind of um, sometimes, do, yeah. yeah. I think sometimes Nick, as an artist, you know, it's we want to have control of all these things, and as soon as you look, you know, I've got my little one now, you know, I'm going to do the school run, you know, in 15 10 minutes, I'm going to go and do the school run. You know, but you've got to really put the time into that. And I, and, I, and I think before you think you could just, oh, let's leave it to the missus to do. Our worlds get consumed by the art. And sometimes yeah, yeah. we've got to delegate and we've got to allow these people into our lives to, to, to help that side of it. Do you know what I mean? Which is important. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think most eyes we go. I think the one thing I will say that we haven't mentioned real quick is I think obviously let's not get into that a rabbit hole with everything to do with this, what's going on now, but thank God for the arts, because, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that are suffering. And I think the idea of what the art does for people's trauma is even more evident now in, in that we, you know, we need, we, you know, we're like sponges. We need this escape into the art. And I think a lot of people, you know, that I've associated with, I spoke to an interview with the gallery, whether it's Marley McFly, whether it's, whether it's, it's John, you know, it's Crash. You know, we need this. And and I think, I think the one thing that carries us out of any situation when it becomes really heavy in society is the arts. Yeah. What would, what would you say about that? Where would you say that your mind's at with that? It's, it's helping you to navigate through this. I think that it's, the, the word is escapism. You know, it's, it's being, you know, being able to kind of, you know, dislocate yourself from, you know, the everyday troubles that, you know, you face within, you know, life, especially now, especially with times where everything's like, you know, you know the world's inside out, upside down. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know the doors are where the windows should be. And it's kind of, it's, it's that kind of, you know, it, it's getting your head around like new rules every single day and like, mm. it's, you know, so I think as with art, you can just kind of just zone in. You can get in that zone and you know, or you can kind of take whatever's been kind of frustrating you for, you know, the last couple of days or weeks and you can throw that into a canvas. Mm. You know, and I think the energy will basically kind of, you know, be... Talking um, of canvas, talking of canvas, what is that behind you, Nick? It's a lovely little piece there. What is that? That's a piece I did back in um, 2010. It's a uh, silk screen. But it's, um, I thought, you know, if Warhol was alive, he would have done it because he liked to kind of um, basically, um, you know, print history, you know. And this is called The Twelfth Day because on the twelfth day, um, it wasn't there. Wow. All right. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a big one. This was like... Yeah, and it was just like that's that is basically the day the the world pretty much changed. Yeah, yeah. wow. That, so, should be, that should be in the gallery in uh, in in Thailand in Bangkok. That should be. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm keeping this one. I've got another <laughs> version which is which that's is different. Very, but the twelfth day is a very clever piece. I love that. Yeah, so, Nick, I mean, we're going, we're getting, we're gearing up for next year. So I'm really hoping we can get a couple of originals in there because obviously we. We were heavily relying on the print stuff last year. And, uh, you know, the number series as well, which is another fascinating, you know, those ghosts, I call them. You know, it's... Yeah, you, yeah, explain this series to me, because I found that series very fascinating because it was something completely different for you. Yeah. How did uh, that, that number series, I really like it. And, I've, I've, and thank you so much, because I've got my 1965 tucked away lovely... Um, but you know, ready to ready to put on the wall here. Um, I, that's another thing that fascinates me with that the numbers. It's 
they're really enjoyable to do because I never know what they're going to look like. And it's such a kind of jump from, you know, stencil painting or morning after piece where I know exactly how it has to end up looking. Yeah. Whereas, whereas with the, with the smoke series, it's, you know, I have no clue. I just stop when I feel like, oh, you know what? That looks good. A collage and, good, and a good exercise of doing stuff. I mean, I, yeah. think a couple, I think there's a couple of those left, but the one that's, the, 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 I can't remember the name of the print, but it fascinates me. It was the girl with the, 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 the balaclava. Again, it Vandal was, child. say again? Vandal Child. Vandal Child, yes. Yeah. So that, I mean, of course, it's, you, ex, you know, ex, ex, expanding that for me was really powerful. But, you know, it's a really powerful image. And I think, it, of course, it's, it, it's, I mean, the daughter of, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of son of berserk thing. It's a very, you know, it's a very kind of hip hop anarchy where you move from one character to sort of son of berserk or daughter of. Yeah. You know, was that yeah, yeah. again that you just thought of that you just thought to continue that whole legacy? Yeah. I mean, just, you know, um, stuck my uh, balaclava on um, my youngest daughter um, on, a, on a hot sunny day, you know, gave her a quid. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we just I just done another piece actually. It's called Revolt, and it says um, her and a little mate back in the day found the photograph, and they're just they're holding hands, and uh, they've just both got balaclavas on, looking really aggro. And uh, was this the and, same daughter I saw in 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 Bristol? No, no, no that was Maddle. Um, it's uh, that was the one the one who did the Vandal Star was Liberty, and um, but. Yeah, they've they both they've both been you know sort of like done little jobs for me in the past, helped me with my own. My we've, got to, we've got to roll them in. That's what we do. I think I had chance oh, yeah. at a collage one time. You know, we got to do that. How is she doing? Because obviously we went we went for dinner. That was a lovely afternoon. We went for dinner with Lawrence. Some nice Jamaican. That's a great Jamaican spot. That that place. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the yeah. name of that spot. That's a wicked spot. Well, well, she we, actually lives next door now. Say again. She lives next door now. No way. <laughs> yeah. but, you, know, you know, that place, what was it called? I can't remember what it's called, but that, isn't it crazy yeah. that since we were there, mm. even Bristol's say, taken a massive change. You know, the statue yeah. came down. It was, you know, it's mad. You know, the Colston event. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, But it's always been that kind of place, Bristol. It's always had this mad energy for ice. Mad yeah. energy going on in Bristol. But I, yeah. I think it's a hive, you know, and it's a bit of a hornet's nest. You know, you poke it to poke it around too much, and a lot will come out. You know, Lawrence is doing a lot of stuff in that in that in that area. Is it something you miss? You miss that vibe in Bristol, or you like? You know, I did that. I'm yeah, kind. Of you know what? There'll never be the scene, will never be the same as it was in the in the mid eighties. Uh, you know, 80, 85, 86, when we all used to go to um, coasters. Costas, yeah, special case. Special case, man. Thing. I mean, I say this, this for all of you, the, you, the, you guys that don't know, Nick was there, you know, that wild bunch Costas, that era in the 80s in Bristol, which is why people say, I mean, you come from Bristol originally, passing through there, the Moon Club, all these places, that the things that happened in that, in that, that was the real birth, the house parties in Bristol at the time as well. Yeah, that'd be right. one every Friday. You know, every Friday, and, someone's tenement yard, there'd be a, a proper house party on different floors. Yeah. I mean, that was really it. It was like you go there and you'd hear Red Groove. In, in, if you go to a blues in Birmingham or Derby, you go to Bristol and you'd have Red Groove in, in the party as opposed to, you'd have your dub and your studio one, but you'd get yeah. Red Groove being played. You'd get like, you know, you know, uh, you know, raw, raw, it was raw. Raw was yeah. out. Yeah, it just, it was, it was a time when, you know, um, we were mixing up breaks, you know, just yeah. like, you know, they get, you know, um, Wild Bunch, and you had FBI crew, you had like, you know, um, like proper sound system central. Somebody you know. sent me a picture of the board that we did that. I put that train, it was rolling like thunder, and it was, it was a piece in coasters that they sent me a picture of. And I'm like, Jesus, that's like, yeah, 83, 83, 84. Right. I mean, uh, it, was, it was, it was a melting pot. You know, that Bristol, I think, I mean, at the time, there was only like really a handful of writers. You know, yeah. there was, you know, Inky, um, myself, um, 3D, 
Um, you had the Z Boys, and then a, then a few lot came up. The, the day the Lord died piece was always when I when I first saw that piece, I was like, oh wow, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a good one. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I mean, I haven't seen him for a long time. I saw him. I tell a lie, I saw him last year, with the year before when we interviewed him. We had a great great time. And uh, but yeah, but you you've not been back for a minute. So you do, are you going to go back to the UK at all soon anytime? Um, I'm supposed to be going to Spain. I I don't know. It's either Thursday or Friday. Probably Thursday. I don't know. So it's are one of those painting. Okay. There? Yeah, probably do a bit. Um, it, and then kind of it's got a show there. It's like a group show. Um, uh, ben Iron, Dot Masters, Pez, myself. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then there's a, another show coming up, which is in Bristol, which is the Vanguard show. Well, listen, Nick, it's been a pleasure. You know, another, another Tats family member, the extension of, um, but yeah, again, tipping the hat to Tats crew and John and those guys who, who, who've, who've helped us no end. Um, and congratulations on the little one who's not so little anymore. Ten, ten months. She's 10 months already. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I think there's a little guy behind the curtain just going like that with time, winding it up. Yeah, yeah. She's it's, dancing. She's dancing, but she's not quite walking. So it's like, so it's, she's nearly there. She's dancing. You've first. just got to get those early rave mixtapes on the go, Nick. You know, get it, get, 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 get it some DB in her. That'll do, that'll do it. That'll get them, but that'll get them doing that. <laughs> this is just playing a salsa and all sorts. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's all over it. It's amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, Nick, thank you. I know it's been a while and I'm glad you, you took time to do this for us at Orem Gallery. I really appreciate it. And I really look forward to getting some new work. You know, we've got a big, big plan for next year. So I'd love to get a couple of original pieces in there. Oh, man. Right. Pleasure.